as a law enforcement officer, um, a lot of calls that you get are for welfare checks. Um, basically what that is, a loved one that lives, say, in California or something like that, is trying to get a hold of someone that they know where you're at. Uh, so they'll call, they'll have you go check to make sure they're okay. So you'll get a call from dispatch, hey, welfare check, blah, 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 whatever address. So you go by there, you see that the person's okay, you call the people back, hey, yeah, they're okay, the phone battery was dead, something like that. 99% uh, of the time, it's a phone that's dead or some, some issue with their phone that they're having or something like that. So anyway, I'm on patrol one day and I get a call for a welfare check, but it's the neighbor that called on the other neighbor. So the neighbor wants to meet me at the driveway, so I go there to where I'm going to the welfare check, the neighbor standing in front of the driveway and said, yeah, oh, I don't even remember the guy's name. So-and-so was calling Tom. Tom goes walking every day, several times a day, and we haven't seen him in two or three days, and he just had surgery, so we just want to make sure he's okay. So me and the guy go down there. He, I drive my patrol unit. He follows me down there. Um... The guy that we're checking on, and this is a nice area, like nice houses. Everybody's got about three or four acres apiece in this community. Well, old Tom, he's got himself a little three or four acres, but he's in a camper. A run-down, nasty, bumper-pull camper, trash all around his property. So very out of character for that area. So the neighbor and I pull up, I'm making my rounds, knocking on the doors, you know, hollering for Tom to come to the door. Nobody comes to the door. So finally I let the neighbor know, hey, you know, we were concerned about his safety. I'm going to make entry. So I wiggle the handle. The door's unlocked. So I open the door. I look to my left, nothing. I look to my right. There's Tom standing right there. Like, oh, okay, Tom, you're good. We're, we're just checking on you. No response. Tom, you good, buddy? He is stiff as a board. The man died standing up. Uh, this camper that he had, there was the bedroom, bathroom with a tiny little hallway, and then the kitchen area, dinette area. So he, whatever surgery he had, something had broke loose in the middle of the night, and it just all came out the bottom. There was black blood and stool. I mean, it was just a mess. So apparently what he had tried to do was get to the bathroom. Really tall guy. Uh, the door, for whatever reason, opened to the outside, you know, to the inside of the camper, away from the bathroom, I guess maybe to block it so you could have privacy in the bathroom. But anyway, so he went to try to open the door, and that was all she wrote, and he died right there. So his knees kind of hit the door, and his back kind of hit the wall. So he just basically standing there, completely dead. So anyway, I call the coroner, I call the sheriff, I call, you know, uh, investigator in to come in, check out the situation, all that good stuff. Well, while I'm waiting for everybody to get there, I notice he's got a dog chained up. And this is summertime. It's hot. This dog is out of water. It's out of food. So I'm going to be the nice guy. I walk around, uh, find some dog food that the guy had out on his property. I give it some dog food and I push it, you know, with my foot towards the dog. Uh, and then I'm always carrying water in my patrol unit. So I went and got a thing of water, poured it in a bow, and as I'm pushing the bow, the dog bites me. Uh, so everybody kind of comes, and I mean, it's bleeding pretty good, and I'm helping them do this. And they're like, what happened? And I was like, ah, the, the damn dog bit me. So they sent me to the emergency room to get checked for rabies, all that good stuff. Um, turns out the dog didn't have rabies, you know, after several days of waiting. But anyway, so we get all that done, get all that taken care of. I call... I find the next of kin, which was his daughter. She was living in New York or someplace like that. Uh, they were going to immediately drive down. She said it'd take them a couple of days, but she was going to get her mom and her husband, and they were all three going to come down. Now, the mom and the guy that died, they had already been divorced, but the daughter, the mom, and the mom or the daughter's husband, they were all going to come down. So. Anyway, I gave them my number, told them to call me, all that good stuff, and I'd, you know, take them down there. So, they call. Well, it's my day off. So, I'm trying to get a hold of somebody. Everybody's busy. So, I was like, God dang it. So, meet them in town. Have them follow me up there. Uh, we pull up. And of course, 
they are in this nice car. They are dressed to the... I mean, you would think they were going to a red carpet affair. They are just... You could tell they were loaded rich. Uh, so I'm just thinking, how out of character, you know, are these people with this guy, this homeless man, basically? I mean, he had nothing. Uh, of course, when you someone dies, you go through their wallet. You try to identify them, all that good stuff. And he had like $45 in his wallet. Uh, barely any food in his refrigerator. He was skin and bones. Uh, but anyway, so I get out of the vehicle, they get out of the vehicle, and the mom and daughter instantly take off whoosh, and start hitting the woods. Uh, the daughter's husband, he's getting some stuff out of the, the trunk, you know, and putting on uh, some different boots and stuff like that. And uh, So I start walking him to the camper, and he just start, gets a walk, starts walking past the camper. He's like, hey, dude, don't you want to go in here and get this guy's stuff? He's like... No, 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 there's nothing in there. I was like, well, he, all everything he owns is in there. He's like, come here, man. He goes, oh, Tom here had a construction business in New Jersey with a business partner. They got in some trouble with the government. They split up, took all the money, and basically swindled everybody out of millions and millions of dollars. So, oh, Tom here is a multimillionaire. And I said, no, the neighbor said he didn't have a car, he didn't have a driver's license, he has no electricity out here, he has nothing. He, he, he walks everywhere, and the, and the guy's like, yeah, that's the way Tom wanted it. Tom wanted off the grid where nobody knew him, nobody could find him, and nobody could track him down, and Tom didn't trust banks. Tom hid his money everywhere, so there is hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, hid on this little piece of property somewhere, and we're here to find that. And once we find that, we're gone. And whatever y'all want to do with the rest of this crap, you can you can do with it whatever you want. I was like, wow. Okay. So anyway, I get my patrol unit and I drive away, and just it it just blew my mind that they could care less about Tom. Could care less. They just they were in the nicest clothes. It was 110 degrees. There's ticks. There's sugars. Everything. And this daughter, the ex-wife, and the husband. They're just going all through the woods, lifting up these old boards and going through these old bags of aluminum cans. And <laughs> But anyway, I've always wanted to go back to that property and walk around and look, but I never have. But uh, if anybody wants to, it's here in Johnson County in Clarksville. Uh, the address is 1-1.